dinner that looks like a dessert, meatloaf cake and cupcakes. Let's see what's cooking, let's get the facts, let's see what's cooking, it's time for yo yo Max 12. Yeah, the amount of ground beef you're going to need is going to depend on how big the cake is and how many cupcakes you want to make. I used about three pounds in total to make that six inch two layer cake and a half a dozen cupcakes. Now you're going to start off with your favorite meatloaf recipe. If you're looking for a great one, I will put a link in the description box to my favorite meatloaf recipe and I've done a video tutorial. It's an old video, but still a good one. Now I used two six inch cake pans that I lightly greased with some cooking spray. And then I packed in the meatloaf mixture to about halfway up the sides of the pan. Now you can use whatever size of baking dishes you want for this, but I find that the six inch size is perfect and uses about two pounds of ground beef. Now you're gonna bake this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 40, 45 minutes until when you stick a thermometer in the center of your hamburger, it reads 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And now for the cupcakes. Now I decided to experiment here because I've never made these before. And I use two different kinds of cupcake liners. I have these that have an aluminum foil on the inside with a decorative outside. And I have these plain paper liners. So I only made six of them. It took about a pound of hamburger to do six of them. And basically what you're going to do is just fill it up with the meatloaf mixture and fill it up right to the top of the cupcake liner because unlike cake batter, these aren't gonna to rise too much. In fact, they're probably gonna shrink a little bit. I bake these at 350 degrees for about a half an hour and the same deal as the meatloaf cake. You're going to bake these until they are safe. That's 160 degrees of Fahrenheit internal temperature. Now we're gonna use mashed potatoes as the frosting and basically I peeled, cubed, and boiled about six or seven very large potatoes that I had on hand until they were done. And then I mashed them up with some butter and some milk. And to make these extra creamy and to make sure there are no lumps, I beat it with an electric mixer until it was very smooth and I couldn't feel any more lumps of unmashed potato in there. And of course you can season these the way that you like with salt and pepper or whatever else you normally put in your mashed potatoes. Okay. Now, once again, I must apologize for not turning my camera on when I'm making these recipes. It drives me crazy when I do this. However, it is what it is. So what I did was I baked the meatloafs until they were done. I took them out of those six inch round baking dishes. I let some of the grease drain off a little bit. I put one of them on a plate put mashed potatoes in the center like frosting for a filling and then the other meatloaf on top. So what you end up with is a cake like object with two layers and then I use the rest of the mashed potatoes to ice it or frost it like you would a regular cake. So I just spread the mashed potatoes on top and up the sides of the meatloaf to cover it completely. I used a cake comb to go all the way around just to make nice decorative lines along the sides and to make the mashed potato layer as even as I could. Now this is the fun part. You can decorate this like you would any cake but using mashed potatoes instead of frosting. I put the potatoes in a piping bag with a large open star tip and then just went around and decorated it by putting kind of large rosettes on the top and little tiny ones along the base of the meatloaf cake and I put one very large one in the center on the top. Now to further decorate this, I used some cut carrots, sliced them into little rounds and stuck them on the sides of the cake. And then I used these little peas and added those to the tips of all of the little rosettes all the way around the cake. Now for the cupcakes, I changed the tip to a 1M tip and just made your classic cupcake swirl on the top of each of the little meatloaves. And you have meatloaf cupcakes. Like you just saw the ones with the foil liners in the middle that I just showed you, those were awesome. They stayed perfect and didn't get greasy at all. Now the paper ones, they actually held up not too bad. Uh, you can see they got a little wrinkly. 
The reason they're sitting on a paper towel right now is because the bottoms got quite greasy and some of the grease came through the paper liner. They still look okay though and you can still use them to fool somebody by giving them dessert for dinner. But if you can find those foil lined paper liners, I got mine at a local grocery store and I'm sure you could probably pick them up at a cake decorating store or even a craft store. Here is the completed cake. I put a little cherry tomato right in the center to give it a little bit of extra color. I thought this turned out so well. It really does look like a cake. It slices like a cake as well. You just slice it up into slices like you would any cake and put it on the plate to serve it. And here are the cupcakes. As you can see, these are the foil lined ones and the regular paper. And even though the paper didn't hold up quite as well, they still look pretty good when you're done. Now keep in mind that your cake and cupcakes are gonna cool quite a bit while you're decorating them. So you may have to pop them back in the oven just to heat them through before you serve them. These cupcakes and cake will be added to my food that looks like other food playlist. If you wanna see it, click on that little eye that's in the top right hand corner of your video screen. And while you're here, why don't you click on that big red subscribe button? You'll get to see some new videos every week.